Hi guys, it's Matt here from Max on UK and in this video we're going to be looking at Cinema 4D's feather object. Now it's very similar to the hair and fur objects that it sort of comes under up here in the menu system with the feathers there. Um, so we're going to have a quick look through that. So I'm just going to create myself um, a quick feather, uh, you know, stalk as it were. Just going to give myself, you know, just a really small thing like that there we go and what I'm gonna do is now it's selected I'm gonna to go to simulate and then hair objects and click feather object and then I simply drag and drop my spline object into the feather and there we go and it starts to create our feather for us now if I just do a quick render you can see that it's um, a very brown very brown feather so I'm just gonna change the color really quickly just so it suits my needs a bit better and I'm just going to change it to white. Okay, there we go. So we've got a nice white feather. Now, it didn't apply in the way that I would have expected it to, or you probably expected it to, um, so I'm just going to adjust it quickly. So let's have a look at the feather object here. So we've got the editor level of detail and things like that, and what it generates. Um, and how it does it. So you've got spacing fixed and you've got rotations and so on and so forth. So you've got adaptive which gives you a lot more barbs um, but I'm going to stick to fixed at the moment and you can choose the sort of like the radius of the, the what would be the inner point if there were to be a um, central point at the moment which I haven't actually got at the moment I'm just trying to work on so like the feather looking so if it had a very sort of thick stalk um, and you can choose you know how wide it is or close together it is at the bottom you can choose where it starts and where it finishes so if I'm just going to put that to zero and then actually um, I'm going to be working that way what I might just do quickly to make life easier is just to reverse the um, points here bear with me a sec, there we go, just reverse, there we go so it starts down the bottom and its end is there it'll make life much easier for us a bit more down the line then you've got barb spacing, which you know increases the amount of space between the barbs as you would expect to do something like that. There you go, it starts to look a bit more like sort of tooth necklace now. Um, so if I just put that back down to something like 0.2, we get a nice fine look. And you can adjust its variations, you know, um, to work within you know a certain amount, and you can see it starts to jitter a little bit more. Then you can increase and decrease the length. And again, you can choose a variation there and then you really can start to get some interesting sort of jitters going on there. I'm gonna try and go for an actual feather. But this is the rotation here that, you know, you can increase it by step, which I quite like, because then we get some sort of interesting twister, twizzler thing, it's a bit like an old Christmas decoration. Um, oh. So I'm just going to delete that out. But you can choose the rotation. There we go. So that's a little bit more like we were expecting this feather to be, you know, working its way around in those axes, which is quite nice. And you can increase and decrease the variation as well. Um, you can actually rotate individually, um, sort of each one, and it starts to look a little bit more like a, oh, a wire brush. There you go. If anyone wants to know how to wire brush, do a wire brush, use the, uh, use the feather there. Okay, um, and then you've got gaps which you can increase and you know using the occurrence so that when it, they start to snag and you can increase and decrease the amount of um, gaps between the two. There we go, we've got a nice sort of feather looking and then you've got some variation as well in some centimeters so that they're a bit more varied rather than all being the same. And then let's have a look at the shape. So this shape is very interesting. You might just sort of have these sorts of, um, you know, smaller ones, um, probably those, whereas I've sort of increased those so that it makes it a little bit easier to create. So let's have a little nose. I'm going to open this in a separate window because it's so much easier to edit than just trying to do with that little thing. And this gives you the starting shape. So if I just adjust that bottom, you can see that that shape changes really quite quickly. Um, 
what I want to do is sort of lower that down to the bottom and lower that down to the bottom and then I can create a point in the middle just by command clicking and bringing that up and that you know gives us a nice curvature there maybe it doesn't finish all the way so say about halfway and maybe that one's a little bit you know less than that so say 0 0.4 and it gives you a nice curve. At the moment our interpolation here is cubic. If I was to change that to spline um, for each of these then I will get those handles which I can then control which is going to make life much easier for getting a nice curved shape. So actually maybe I will put that back down to... There we go. It's a really nice way of just, you know, working with the curvature to get the nice looking feather the way, you know, you want it to look. Okay, so then let's do something similar with this one. So just open in separate window and Again, I'm going to you know, control click, create myself some curvature, use the interpolations, and adjust that curve so that I get, oh, no, not linear, spline adjust the curvature so I can get something that's much more feather-like there. Okay, there we go. And quite quickly we've been able to create ourselves a nice-ish looking feather there. Okay, um, you can have a look at the cross-section and what that does is that changes the sort of curvature here. So if I was to just create a couple of bumps there you can see that that feather now has curves in the middle which then curve out that gives you the cross section and then oh, I'm just going to minimize those and then you've got a curve one which if I do gives you another curve sort of in here as well okay so there we go I hope that was a uh, useful and brief introduction to the uh, feather object in Cinema 4D and I will catch you next time.